My name is Yalda Hakim and I grew up in Sydney, Australia. I now live in London and work for BBC World News as a journalist. Well, the story of migration of, of my family out of Afghanistan uh, into Pakistan and then to Australia uh, is not uh, one that's uncommon. It is an extraordinary journey, but it's one that millions of Afghans have made and then eventually settled in different parts of the world. My family uh, left Afghanistan because uh, my father was living in, was studying in what was uh, Czechoslovakia at the time. Uh, and he lived out of Afghanistan for approximately seven years. And he returned to the country and found a country on the brink of war. And, uh, you know, the monarchy had been overthrown and he arrived in the country and he was going to be conscripted into the army. Um, he, uh, you know, did served a period in the Afghan army and uh, he at the time knew that, you know, it wasn't a place that he wanted to raise his family. And then when he was asked a second time um, to join the army, uh, he was convinced he had to leave. And so, uh, you know, it was a very tense time in the country. And uh, the year was 1983 and I was six months old. And um, uh, my father left the country, um, you know, via people smugglers. Um, and um, it was my older sister and brother and my mother and myself and my father who left the country. And then they migrated, uh, made the journey into Pakistan um, and, uh, you know, settled there for a couple of years before coming to Australia. And the reason it was Australia that they chose to come to is because um, my father knew an architect in, in Afghanistan who knew an architect in Australia. And the architect in Australia, his wife, uh, who's a journalist, um, sponsored my family to come and live in Australia. So they eventually settled here and, um, you know, I think it was... Uh, you know, looking back, my parents don't have a single regret. Uh, they're glad that they raised their family here in, in Australia and in Sydney, and um, Australia will always be home for me. I would say I had an, uh, an upbringing like any migrant child, where I had two communities, one in the home and, and, and with the uh, community that my parents felt comfortable with, and, and the one that we had adopted, the Australian community. I think my parents and my family very much embraced uh, their new home, their new country. There was, um, you know, a sense of belonging in Australia because of all the opportunities that uh, were presented to them uh, in terms of education, employment, that they knew they couldn't get back home. And uh, as the situation deteriorated in Afghanistan, they knew more and more that they would never go back. Um, but that didn't mean that they weren't fully across the political changes in the country and that they um, made sure that that conversation stayed alive as I was growing up and as, as my siblings were growing up. So even when the Taliban came to power and uh, once their true face uh, sort of uh, was exposed to the world, um, you know, as a child I remember being woken up in the early hours of the morning, five or six o'clock in the morning, to go to Canberra to protest uh, at various embassies against the Taliban rule and to bring to light uh, the atrocities that they were committing against the Afghan people. So there was a sense of um, discussion about Afghanistan constantly in our household uh, and as was other issues, uh, global political issues and, and international uh, politics as well as issues of social justice and Afghanistan was the centrepiece of that. So growing up, um, you know, I don't think my parents ever thought that they would leave Australia and move back to Afghanistan. Australia had very much become the place they would raise their children and their home. Um, but, you know, I, I always felt that at some point I would like to go and visit the country of my birth and the place where my, fam my parents grew up. Um, it didn't seem possible for a long time, certainly not during the civil war um, between different factions in the country and then obviously during the years that the Taliban were in power. But once 9-11 happened um, and there seemed to be you know, a, an, another change um, in the country and at the time I, I was um, you know, 18, uh, studying, uh, finishing my HSC and um, hoping to get into a journalism degree, I did think in those years that I would at some point like to go back to Afghanistan. I wanted to be a journalist since I was about seven years old. I was 
adamant and you know I've got diary entries and, and things that I've written down as a child stories that I've written down um, from the conversations that I heard at home um, you know and and wanting to be a storyteller myself and I think my family's personal journey out of Afghanistan listening to those stories and having an awareness of um, you know issues of social justice and international politics certainly was a huge factor in my in my you know, choice to be uh, pursue a career in journalism. Obviously, at that age, I wasn't quite sure what it involved, but um, I was very much encouraged from a very young age, from the age of seven or eight, to watch the news, to watch um, and engage in current affairs, uh, to write for local papers, and these are things that my my father really encouraged me to do. So, um, you know, he obviously noticed a passion that I had, and then uh, nurtured that, and you know, that I think that had a lasting effect. I always wanted to go back um, and it was interesting to finally then go back and in the in sort of the role that I went back in. I went there, you know, as a journalist, hiding behind a camera and capturing the country um, from the eyes of a journalist, as an observer, uh, rather than, you know, putting myself in the middle of it. But that was something that eventually happened in the period that I was there. As much as I tried to remove myself from the place, it was a very emotional journey going back to the country. I remember um, when the, uh, you know, plane was sort of flying over and, and into Kabul, um, and the pilot announced that we had sort of entered um, Afghan airspace and, and uh, we were sort of approaching Kabul. I felt very emotional because this was a country and a place that I had heard so much about, so many stories, and my parents had romanticised the country. Um, I didn't know what to expect and, uh, you know, I, I think it, all of those emotions um, just, just hit me. And to go back to the country and, you know, the way that my parents had described the country was this sort of proud warriors who defended their country against British occupation and rule and, and then the Soviet Union and, and, you know, against any kind of oppression. And to finally go back into the country and find a people who were very um, tired of war and, and uh, were just longing for peace and stability and security. Um, I found that, you know, um, sort of very emotional and, and, and then to, for, for me to then have a very personal connection, this was the place of my birth, this is where my parents grew up and then to meet grandparents um, at the age of 25, um, having only heard about them and this country was very confronting for me. My first interview with uh, Hamid Karzai, the president of Afghanistan, was in March of 2012 for SBS's date Dateline program. And the second interview was for BBC, uh, World News, and a, a number of their domestic programs uh, in October of 2013. And in both of those interviews, I got the sense from Hamid Karzai that he was extremely frustrated uh, with his relationship with uh, the Western uh, world. And what I feel uh, that he uh, is, is trying to do in these final stages of his um, leadership is uh, to outline his legacy and what he wants to leave behind. And so I think one of the things that he wants is to show that he uh, has stood up for the sovereignty of his country and that he has voiced concerns about things like night raids uh, that uh, are conducted and, and the various other political discussions that he's had, the ongoing discussions with the United States and um, other NATO partners. So, you know, he has been the president of the country uh, for the last 12 years, well, since 2004 he's been the president and he's been leader of the country since the fall of the Taliban. So it's interesting to observe how his relationship has changed in that period. And it's a bit of a reflection of the country itself um, as it tries to stand on its own feet uh, and find itself and find its, its place again in the region and the world. Um, I think speaking to Hamid Kaza, you get a sense of the mood of the country itself. And I think in the last few years, as I've gone back and forth into Afghanistan, I've been heartened to see how it has uh, changed and evolved. So when I went for the first time in 2008, uh, you know, I looked at the country from one perspective and then going back a number of times throughout the years and then finally again in October of 2013, 
you know, I, I saw a country where, and, and especially in the capital, Kabul, where there was a lot of construction. Um, there were, were a lot of women going out and about uh, to work and to school. And those sorts of things I find extremely encouraging uh, for the country. And, and I hope uh, that, you know, as the sort of transition happens this year, uh, that uh, the country will continue to evolve and, you know, um, move towards um, a positive change um, rather than spiral back into what it was a few before the US-led invasion. Um, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of grim uh, reporting that comes out of the country and, and uh, speculation of civil war. I personally don't think it'll go down that path. Too much has been invested by the allied forces, by the Afghan people themselves, to go back to a situation when the Taliban were, were in power.